listening to the Becoming Who You Are podcast, your guide to authentic living. Visit becomingwhoyouare.net for more resources, tools, and suggestions designed to help you create the life you want from the inside out. Now here's your host, Hannah. Hello, and welcome to the Becoming Who You Are podcast. My name is Hannah, and thank you so much for joining me today. In this episode, I want to look at a really, really fundamental question that comes up frequently when we engage in personal development. I know that this question has certainly come up for me many, many times and will probably come up in the future as well. And I've also known a lot of people who have struggled with this as well. This question is one of life's most profound questions, and I think that's why it's so hard. And this question is, How do we know what we really want? Often we get sucked into the flow and we go along with what we're told we should want, what it's normal to want, and what it's reasonable to want. When we start becoming more authentic and uncovering more of ourselves, getting rid of these shoulds and comparisons can leave a big gaping hole. This can be really scary because uncertainty is a scary place and it might feel like we're floating, not able to grasp what it is we truly want in our lives. Expressing our wants feels wrong, like we might be too demanding of people. Going after our wants ourselves can be terrifying. What if we make a mistake or what if we find out that we're unable, we are not capable of achieving our wants? And this can all leave us asking, I have a sense that there's more that I want, but how do I access that? Where do I start? Everyone is different, so what works for one person might not work for another, and I don't think there is a solution that can cover everybody's needs in this situation. I don't have a definitive answer for this. I wish I did. It would certainly make my life easier. However, I do have a series of steps that have helped me work out what I actually want from a situation, and that I want to share with you in case you find them helpful too. The first step is around knowing my instincts and trusting my instincts. Instincts are there for a reason. They're important messages and should be heeded carefully. Sometimes when we have a lot of internal beliefs, a lot of internal shoulds, and a lot of conflicting messages, we might not feel much trust in our instincts because they're all fighting with each other. The key to this is knowing what kinds of things push our buttons and being able to honestly ask ourselves the following questions. Am I in a place where I can trust my instincts right now? What stresses or difficulties might I be facing that could mean other things are possibly interfering with my instincts? What part of me is telling myself that I want this? What do I know about this part of me? Where do feelings around this want show up in my body? Can I think of other times that feeling showed up? What happened then? The second step is being aware of urgency. So two sensations that we might feel in relation to our instincts are a sense of urgency and or a sense of desperation. When we feel that we desperately or urgently want or even need to do something, there's usually a story playing out underneath about what might happen or what it might mean if we don't do get or experience that thing. So here are some questions to ask yourself around that. Do I feel desperate? What do I know about myself that could be influencing this decision? For example, do I respond to stress by comfort buying or comfort eating, or conversely by denying myself things that I might genuinely want? What do I know about myself that could lead me to rush into or avoid a decision? What is the story behind this one? The third step is priorities and values. If you have a long-term goal to pay off your credit card, but those shiny $300 shoes are calling to you, you might feel like you want the shiny shoes right now, but will that really be the case in the long term, and how will you feel about that in the long term? You go to a job interview and discover you're going to be selling old ladies' life insurance that you know will cost them a fortune and provide them with zero realistic cover. You're down to your last 10 bucks, and they've just offered you the job. You want a job and you want to be able to eat later this week, but you're not sure if this is the job you want. Unless your values are aligned with swindling old ladies, you might feel the urge to take it, but you won't want to because it doesn't fit in with your values. So here are three questions to ask yourself around priorities and values. What are my priorities? How does this fit in with my values? How does this fit in with my needs? 
And I would just encourage you to notice any correlation or relationship between the answers to those three questions, as well as any conflicts. The fourth step is visualizing. Visualizing can give us distance from the emotional weight of our current situation, and it helps us look at life from a different perspective. By looking at the situation we're in from the outside, we can get clarity that might otherwise be obscured by our shoulds, feelings of apathy, and our internal conflict. Two types of visualizations can be helpful, future self-visualizations and third-party visualizations. Here is one form of a future self-visualization. When I think of my best possible future self six months or one year ahead, how will I feel looking back on this? A third party visualization might be something like this. When I imagine someone who I consider a role model, what would they do in this situation? The fifth step is to stop planning. When we find it hard to know what we want, whether in a particular situation or in general, this can be because we are just too busy. A cluttered mind leaves little space for exploration and consequently we experience a frustrating blankness. Planning unstructured time frees our mind from the daily grind, the endless to-do lists and the good old shoulds, and leaves us with ourselves. Additionally, one thing that I found really helpful with this issue is making sure I have somewhere where I can get everything out of my head and onto paper. So there are two things that I use to do this. The first is a productivity system called Getting Things Done, which has a feature called a core dump, which is where you write down every task you can think of in your head. So everything you have to do, whether that is something to buy, whether it's a task associated with a project, whether it's something that you've been thinking of doing. So for example, perhaps I've been thinking of taking up tap dancing this summer. I would just write that all down. So it's all down on paper. It's out of my head and I'm not taking up my mental time and energy thinking about all these ideas and these plans anymore. And I have a way of storing them so I can return to them later as well. 750 words or morning pages follows the same principle. It's just about sitting down each morning and getting everything out of your head and onto paper. There is something really valuable about this exercise because inevitably when you write down all your thoughts, suddenly they become less powerful and they become less dominating. And again, it really frees up all this mental energy, this mental space. And you can then use that to look at these really hard decisions, look at the things that you really need to be thinking about and figuring out what you really want in these situations. When it comes to unstructured time, a couple of questions to ask yourself are, when I make time to sit with myself, not planning anything, not deliberately doing anything, how does that feel? The second one is, when I make time to sit with myself, not planning anything, what comes up for me? What do I notice about what comes up? Unstructured time is hard. I find it really challenging to shut down my brain and tell my internal taskmaster to take it easy for a couple of hours. Sometimes we have to do this several times over, for example, every weekend or two evenings a week before we start to notice a difference. But the more we practice it, the more we will find it helpful and the more we will be giving ourselves the space that we need to figure out what we really truly want. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any comments, questions, feedback or anything else at all, please feel free to email me at hannah, that's H-A-N-N-A-H at becomingwhoyouare.net. Thank you so much for listening to this episode today. I look forward to talking to you again very soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Becoming Who You Are podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to iTunes and leave a review. You can get in touch with Hannah by emailing H-A-N-N-A-H at becomingwhoyouare.net. Don't forget to visit becomingwhoyouare.net and find out how you can use rational personal development to live an authentic life. Thank you.